Sweet School on RealArtCulture.com is brought to you by Syngenta Canada, Alberta Wheat Commission, and CNM Seeds. Real Agriculture's Wheat School series. I'm Kara Oosterhaus. Today we have Jeremy Boychin with us. Jeremy, how's it going? Great, Kara. How are you today? Not bad. So can you tell us what we're doing here today in this field? So today we are looking at survival rates of cereals. We want to get a good idea of what percentage of seed that we put in the ground is actually turning into crop. So can you tell us how to actually assess these mortality rates when we're getting into the fields? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the first thing you want to do is get a good idea of what the field looks like as a whole. Um, you want to see if there's any problem areas um, and you want to avoid them when taking some of these measurements. Um, obviously, you can, you can get very detailed with these kind of measurements if you're doing variable rate or if you're doing sectional control. Um, you can then pick those sections and take those measurements in those areas as well. Um, but if you're just doing one seeding rate across the entire field, you want to make sure you're picking areas that are representative of your field. Um, so take a look around, make sure that you're in an area that's actually representative, um, and then you want to uh, take your meter stick and count the amount of plants in the row um, within that meter. Uh, you want to make sure that you're not being biased with where you're putting that meter stick down. Um, so one trick I've seen agronomists do or farmers do is use a colored ball or a or your, your shovel, your trowel that you're using uh, and throw it and then go to where you've thrown it to and drop your meter stick down there and take your measurements. And you're counting the amount of plants that are in that row along that meter stick. Um, and every once in a while when you're down there, it might be a good idea to, ch to pull those plants up and take a look, uh, but you're counting the amount of plants in that meter stick row and then depending on your row width, uh, you're gonna multiply that number. If you're in 12 inch rows, you're gonna multiply that number by 3.3. If you're in 10 inch rows, you're gonna multiply that number by uh, four. If you're in nine inch rows, you're gonna multiply that number by 4.4. Um, this is going to give you the amount of plants you have per meter squared. And then you can divide that number by 10 and you're gonna get the number of plants per foot squared. Um, you do this multiple times across your field and then you're gonna get an average of what your plant stand is like across your field. How many samples do you typically recommend producers take out of a field? Good question, um, and it's going to depend on how varying your field is. If you have a whole lot of hills and knolls, you're going to want to take more. If your field is relatively flat and you feel like your emergence is, is pretty even across the field, you can reduce that number, but there's no specific number you want to take. Um, I would probably, in a, in a quarter section, want to take at least five to ten measurements if I want to get a good idea of what my plant stand is actually like. So once producers have actually taken this information out of the field, what do they do with it? Why is it useful? So it's useful for a couple of reasons. Um, the first one is it really gives you an idea of how your seeds are going to respond with your management tactics um, and how you're putting that seed in the ground. Um, and especially in a year like this where you're potentially digging deeper for moisture um, or maybe wanting to move a bit quicker because um, environmental conditions are making it challenging for you to seed, you're going to get an idea of how those seeds actually turned into a crop. Um, and if you do this year by year, you're going to get a real idea of what your germination rates are like across your field, across your farm. And that way, when you when you make changes in the future, um, let's say you maybe change your seeder or you trial a seed treatment, you're going to get an idea of how that's going to affect your emergence. Um, and this can really help you make sure that you're aiming for a strong plant stand. Because um, if, you're, if you're hitting plant stands lower than, say, 200 plants per meter squared um, and you and you seeded for 300 plants per meter squared, um, you can really start to question whether there's, whether there's issues there. Um, but if you're seeing good emergence uh, and you're in that 250 plants per meter squared range and you, and you seeded for that, that kind of range, um, then you know that you're, you're, you're doing everything that you can to get a good plant stand. Great. Is there anything you'd like to add? No, that's everything other than make sure you go out, check your wheat, you check, check your wheat um, and make sure you're, you're getting good stands and, and, and good wheat growth. Mm -hmm.